Good Thursday morning, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Hope you guys are going to have a good day today. Uh, only happens once a year. It's a special day for a lot of people. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to I'm going to eat a lot of food and I'm going to watch a lot of football. So we've got three games today. Uh, one is starting in about half an hour. So let's just get right into it. Let's start taking a look at week 12 in the NFL. Look at the games, see who we want to win, who we want to lose. What benefits the Seahawks the most? And uh, obviously, on a Thanksgiving, you've got three games. And the relative level of intrigue for Seahawks fans across these three games is kind of low, admittedly. I will acknowledge that, but let's go through it anyway. Let's try to find something to be excited about. So, half an hour from now, we've got Bills-Lions... This is what they call a low-stakes game. It doesn't really matter that much. The only angle where you can find intrigue here is with the Lions and their draft pick. Now, the Lions have won three games in a row. They are probably clear of picking anywhere near the top five. But I guess if they lost out, they would still be around there. At 4-13, and 13, you'd probably get a top eight pick at the minimum, right? So, I guess we want the Lions to bank one more win between now and the end of the season, maybe two, just to be safe. I don't think one of those games is going to be against the Bills, but while we're here, I guess we may as well hope it happens. So, this first game, yeah, I guess we're going to pull for the Lions a little bit here, but low stakes is the key phrase there. The next game is the game we actually might really be invested in, uh, Giants-Cowboys 130. This could be kind of the beginning of the end for the Giants. Last week, they slipped up against the Lions. Now, ordinarily, you'd brush that off. They're still 7-3. and three. They're still overachieving, and those things are still true. But you look at the Giants' remaining schedule. They've got this game against the Cowboys. They've got two against Philly. they got one against Minnesota. If they lose all of those games, suddenly they're at 10-7, and seven, and 10-7 and seven is not a guarantee in the NFC to make the playoffs, I don't think. Even if you give them, um, I think they have one soft game left on that schedule. Even if you give them that, they still have two games against the Commanders. And the Commanders are playing good right now. So if the Giants lose this game, and then they've got four losses. Philly sends them to six. Minnesota sends them to seven. And then the margin for error gets very thin. And those are just the good teams that they have left to play, right? So, I think we're actually rooting for the Cowboys because looking at the Cowboys schedule, I kind of feel like no matter what happens, even if they lose this game, they make the playoffs. So, if the Giants lose, they're more likely to fade from the playoff race and end up on a team as a, as a team on the outside looking in. It might come down to them and the Commanders duking it out for that last playoff spot, which is obviously all good news for Seattle because if both those teams don't get in, then Seattle's almost certainly going to get in. So I think we're actually Cowboys fans for this one. I could see it going the other way, but I think it's much less likely the Cowboys collapse down the stretch than the Giants, just looking at the schedule and looking at the teams they have. Uh, the late game, Patriots-Vikings. I don't think we're going to catch the Vikings. I think that ship has sailed. They're two games up. They've got a relatively soft schedule the rest of the way. Um, they, they play in a really weak division that is going to probably feed them at least two, probably three more wins. So I don't think we're going to catch them, but there's no reason not to hope for it, right? Like if we win the division and the Vikings win their division and the Vikings are almost definitely going to win their division, maybe there's some sort of seeding tiebreaker. So yeah, we're Patriots fans, even though it may not matter, maybe it will. Let's, let's hope it does. Why not? So, yeah, Patriots fans in that one. Just knock the Vikings down a couple pegs. Maybe we catch them. And that takes us to Sunday. So I'm not going to talk about Raiders Seahawks, really, because we all know. We all know what we need to happen there. We're going to keep rooting for this team. Hope they bounce back from a couple weeks ago and hope they right the ship. Obvious. Talk more about that later. The rest of the games, we got Bucks browns Obviously, we tend to root for the AFC team when it comes to these games. And I think that's a reasonable path to take. What I will say is this. If Tampa Bay gets in the playoffs, it's almost definitely going to be winning their division. They're probably not going to get a wild card. So I, I think that if you look at it from that angle, you might say, well, 
The Buccaneers, they might end up in a seeding war with us. That's possible. But they're not going to knock us out of the playoffs. They're not going to take the last wild card spot unless Atlanta catches fire. So them winning is not the worst thing. I'm sorry. Them, um, them winning would not be the worst thing in the world. So I'm not really talking about it from that angle so much. I'm a little more interested in the angle of the Browns winning a game or two here and there so they don't pick in that top five ahead of where Denver might pick. So either way, we're rooting for the Browns, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. So don't get it twisted. Either way, we are Browns fans in this one. But I will say, I think that angle is actually a little more compelling because the Browns, I don't think they're going to be one of the worst teams in the league when the dust clears at the end of the year, but they could be. They're three and seven. They have real problems on that team. So it's on the table and I prefer they notch a couple of wins here and there. So they're not in that conversation. Bengals, Titans, um, not a lot of intrigue here. The Titans played the Broncos. So if the, uh, the Titans lose games, then it hurts the Broncos' strength of... Or actually, yeah, it hurts the Broncos' strength of schedule, which is good for their pick. It moves their pick up. So we want the Bengals to win, but that's the only reason why we should care about this game at all, I think. So yeah, rooting for the Bengals. Just for the strength of schedule stuff. Texans, Dolphins, if we want any chance at that number one pick, we need the Texans to start putting together a, win, uh, a couple wins. Um, they do have games against, I think, Jacksonville and Indy later this year. They could win those. But more than likely, we're going to need them to pull a monster upset. And this week is another opportunity to do that. Uh, Miami doesn't really have anything to do with us. So, yeah, we're rooting for the Texans to notch some wins here so maybe they can push their pick down a little bit. I will say this. A little bit of a silver lining. The Texans' record this year is killing the Broncos' SOS, which is good for us. So that's a little bit of the silver lining here, but obviously we would rather have them win enough games to push their pick below Denver's. So, rooting for the Texans big time. Uh, Bears-Jets. So, the Bears are a team that is in play for a top pick. I think they currently pick third. The Jets are a team that played the Broncos this year, so their record affects the Broncos' strength of schedule. So you put those two things together, and yeah, we're Bears fans. We want the Bears to win, boost that pick down, or drag that pick down a little bit, drag the uh, Broncos' strength of schedule down just a little bit, and yeah. We want the Bears to notch a couple wins here at the end of the year. And the way Justin Fields is playing, they're probably going to find a way to. They've been very, very unfortunate the last month or so to not win some of these games. Maybe this is an opportunity they can get it done. Uh, obviously, the Jets, they're, they're, they're kind of teetering on the edge here. They're having a pretty good year, but the whole uh, Zach Wilson thing threatens to undo all of it. So, going to be interesting to see what happens there. Big game here. These next two games, actually, really big. Falcons Commanders. This game might be kind of like, I don't want to be drastic here, but it's kind of like loser leaves town, right? Because whoever wins this game owns the tiebreaker in a wild card race and will also just be in a better position because they won. So either way, it's okay. I think we want the Falcons to win. There's no way I'm counting on it because they've been terrible on the road unless it's in Seattle this year and the Commanders are playing really well lately. I think we want the Falcons, but I think there's an argument to be made that we'd rather have the Falcons just get buried in this one. So let me know what you guys think about that one. I want to see what people think about this one, because if the Falcons win, then the Falcons and Commanders both have the same record, and you could say both teams are still in the mix. If the Commanders win, they firm themselves up as being in the mix, but the Falcons are basically flushed. So I don't know what's preferable. Would you rather have nine teams duking it out for the seven spots or eight? Let me know what you think. All right. Um, also early, and this is going to be maybe the most interesting early game for Seahawks fans for obvious reasons, Broncos, Panthers. This game may very well decide who picks number two overall. If the Broncos lose this game, a game to a really bad Panthers team that sounds like they're going to be playing Sam... Darnold at quarterback, not even the guy who's actually won a couple games this year in P.J. Walker. No, Sam Darnold. Then I don't know how they win another game the rest of the year. 
and I don't know how they pick any lower than second. So this is a big one. If if the Broncos can just find their way to one more loss, you, after this game you can fire Hackett. Go ahead, do it. He will have done his job at that point for us. But find a way to one more loss in Carolina, a place where Carolina has actually played pretty well this year. They're three and three. All three of their wins at home. They played pretty well at home for the most part. Find a way to another L, and we can start celebrating that top three pick. And obviously the Panthers are a team that's in contention for a top pick, so them winning helps, but in this game it goes without saying. Uh, Ravens-Jaguars, um, both teams play the Broncos this year, so strength of schedule, that part doesn't, that part cancels out. Jacksonville's bad enough to where they could get a top pick, so I guess we want them to win. Certainly not counting on it or anything like that, but yeah, I would say we're probably rooting for Jacksonville to win just to knock a win on that, um, knock a win on that, uh, record and hopefully end up picking below wherever Denver picks. And that takes us to the afternoon slate, 1.05 p.m. We got the Chargers and the Cardinals. So let's uh, think about this for a second here. Cardinals are in our division, but they're, they're toast, right? They're 4-7. and seven. We own the tiebreaker. Kyler's hurt. Uh, the team doesn't seem like they're really invested in stuff anymore. The team seems like they don't like each other that much. So in a way... Do we want the Chargers to lose because it'll hurt the Broncos' strength of schedule a little bit because they play the Chargers twice and the Cardinals once? I don't know. Um, I'd say we're probably Chargers fans for this one just because it's the Cardinals and we want to see them completely buried, but they're, they're buried regardless. If they win this game as a fluke, then who cares? Rams, Chiefs... Um, there's an argument to be made for us rooting for the Rams for draft pick and strength of schedule reasons. We need the Rams to win a couple games to make sure they don't end up with that top three pick sending it to Detroit. We want them to be picking behind um, Denver. But at the same time, it's the Rams. And they're not going to win anyway, so why even bother rooting for it, I guess? Um, I don't know. Do whatever you want to in this one. Obviously, the Rams are sunk. They're, they're not going to matter the rest of the way. Three and seven, no Stafford, probably no Cup. Like, it's not happening. But I don't know if that's enough for us to actually root for them. So that's up to you guys. I think I'm going to actually say, I think I'm actually just going to admit it. I'm rooting for the Chiefs. I like the Chiefs. They're fun. I like watching them. Well, uh, sue me. Uh, Saints 49ers, pretty obvious here. Anytime the 49ers play, we're going to be rooting against them for the rest of the way. And we want the Saints to notch a couple wins anyway, to push their pick down a little bit more. And, um, well, it's the Eagles pick now, but regardless, we want that pick to be pushed down below where Denver picks. Uh, Sunday night, we got Packers-Eagles. So let's, uh, let's think about this. Eagles are three games ahead of us. They have an easy schedule the rest of the way. They're probably going to win that division. The odds of us ending up in a battle with the Eagles for playoff positioning is basically nil. The Packers, however, have seven losses, still have to play the Vikings. They're probably out of it as well. So this is actually kind of a difficult one, right? Do you want the Packers to get completely buried and just have their playoff chances cut off? Just chop their heads off now? Or do you want them to knock the Eagles down a peg, hope that Maybe some miracle happens where you can catch a team like the Eagles, be seated higher than them, and count on the Packers losing later. I I think we want the Packers to win. I just can't imagine that Packers team getting involved even if they beat the Eagles. But um, I think it's really unlikely either way. So whatever you want to do is probably fine here. And then Monday Night Football, we got Steelers-Colts. Steelers need to win a couple games here to make sure they don't end up with a top three pick. They can't sneak ahead of Denver. I think they're bad enough to get that top pick. I think the Steelers are bad enough to get that top three pick. So we need them to find a win here and there. Maybe this is the one. They're playing a Colts team that has a ton of problems of their own. I will say, also, the Colts losing hurts the Broncos' strength of schedule, which is also good because the Steelers don't play the Broncos this year and the Colts did. So yeah, Steelers. And I think that's about it. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you disagree. I will talk to you guys 
Later, have a happy Thanksgiving. Go Hawks. See you guys tonight.